So let's think a minute about the motion of objects. Motion is something that happens around us all the time, and we normally don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about it. However, any good physics program usually begins with the study of what's called kinematics. Kinematics is the branch of mechanics concerned with the motion of objects without reference to the forces which cause the motion. This means we're looking to describe how things move without being concerned about what makes them move. This is best accomplished by having multiple ways to represent the motion of objects. These multiple representations of motion include narrative representations, motion diagrams, graphical representations, and mathematical representations. Narrative representations are written or verbal descriptions of the motion of objects. Complete narrative representation must include a description of the object's speed or velocity, direction of motion or displacement, and its acceleration. This means we are specific in saying whether the object is moving to the left, to the right, east, west, or moving in a circle, and whether it's speeding up or slowing down or moving with a constant speed. Now, when describing the direction of some vector quantity, like velocity or displacement, we often use positive or negative signs. Typically, right and up are positive, while left and down are negative directions. There are times though where it is more convenient to change those conventions. Those will be pointed out as we get to them. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose this girl here is walking through the park. A complete narrative representation of her motion would be something like Amber walked to the east at a steady rate of one meter per second. This tells us what direction Amber is walking, that she has no acceleration, and that her velocity has a value of one meter per second. Another way to represent motion is through a motion diagram. These are dot diagrams that uh, indicate the position of an object at equal time intervals. The distance between intervals indicates greater velocity. For example, imagine we represent Amber here as a single point. Now, when Amber takes her walk across the park, we place a dot in equal time intervals, say one dot every 30 seconds. By then connecting those dots with an arrow pointing in the direction of her motion, we get a visual depiction of her velocity, acceleration, and the amount of time it took for that motion to occur. The motion diagram shows she walked at a constant speed to the right for two minutes. These are very useful in understanding what is happening in a problem and what needs to be done to solve each problem. The critical component of a motion diagram is that the amount of time between each dot is the same. Now let's look at another example. Imagine Amber is taking her walk through the park when off in the distance she sees a bear so she decides to run. If we were to continue to place dots at equal time intervals, we would see that the spacing between those dots increases with each interval. Connecting those dots with velocity arrows shows that this increased spacing is her increasing velocity or her acceleration, which points in the direction of the longest velocity arrows. Now let's imagine that while Amber's running, she slows to a stop. Her velocity steadily decreases in the same direction she's moving, but the acceleration is opposite her direction of motion. So this is a case of positive velocity with negative acceleration. Now let's look at graphical representations of motion. These are always graphs of the motion over time. Either position, velocity, or acceleration is go on the y-axis, time is always on the x-axis. So we commonly call these position time, velocity time, or acceleration time graphs. Let's go back to Amber taking a stroll through the park. Let's say this time she walks along at a constant speed, then she sits down in the grass for a time. Remembering ah, that she forgot to complete her physics homework, she then jumps up and runs home. But she gets tired halfway there, so she slows to a walk. Okay, let's see how this would look on a position time graph. The origin of the axes represents where Amber began her motion. 
we make the y-axis position measured in meters and the x-axis time measured in seconds. When Amber began her motion, she walked at constant speed, meaning her position changed in regular intervals. So we will see the line of her motion as a straight sloped line indicating a constant velocity. Then she sat down, not moving for a time. The line shows a constant position as the time interval continues to change. When she runs back, slowing to a walk partway there, she's going back to where she started. The line must show a negative slope to show she's going back to the origin. And since she's running, the line must show her position is changing at a faster rate than before, so it shows a steeper sloped line. When she slows to a walk again, the line is less sloped to show a slower velocity. So on a PT graph, the slope of the line will give you the speed and the sign of that slope, positive or negative, will give you the direction. Therefore, the slope of a PT graph results in the velocity of the object and a constant slope indicates a constant velocity. So what would this motion look like on a velocity time graph? For VT graphs, we extend the velocity on the y-axis to show negative velocity. For Amber's motion, we saw that her initial motion on the PT graph was a straight, positively sloped line indicating a constant positive velocity. So this is shown on the VT graph as a straight horizontal line beginning at the value of the velocity. During the time interval where Amber sat still, she had no velocity. So we must show on the VT graph a time interval of zero velocity. Then Amber began running back to where she started, so we show again a constant velocity, but we must show it in the negative direction, and it must be greater than the first velocity. When Amber slows back to a walk, we see that on the VT graph as a lower magnitude negative constant velocity. What else can we get from a VT graph? We get a clue by looking at the units on the axis. Our y-axis is measured in meters per second and our x-axis is measured in seconds. Notice how the geometric shape of each section of the motion is a rectangle. Remembering that the area of a rectangle is length times width, we can see that if we multiply the maximum values on the axes, the units of time cancel, and we're left with the unit of displacement, the meter. So the area under a VT graph will give us the displacement of the object. At areas above the time axis, it will be positive. If it's below, it's a negative displacement. So that's a VT graph for an object moving at constant speed. But what would acceleration look like on a VT graph? Remember, velocity is changing displacement over time, and acceleration is changing velocity over time. So acceleration is how quickly, how fast changes. An acceleration of, say, 10 meters per second squared means that the velocity of the object is changing by 10 meters per second every second that it's moving. A negative acceleration means that that acceleration is happening in the negative direction. Let's imagine Amber pulls an apple out of her bag and tosses it into the air. She gives the apple an initial positive velocity upward. The moment the apple leaves her hand, it begins slowing down as it moves upward momentarily having zero velocity at the top of its motion. And then it speeds up as it moves back down to Amber's hand. How could we show this motion on a VT graph? We know it starts with a positive initial velocity, so we can mark a spot on the positive Y axis at zero seconds. We know it slows its velocity momentarily becoming zero meters per second at a later point, so we can mark a spot on the X axis Showing that. Finally, we know that this apple speeds up in the negative direction as it moves back toward Amber's hand. Time continues to pass as this happens, so we can mark this final velocity at a point along the negative y axis and further along the x axis. Connecting each of these points gives us a straight slope line starting at our initial velocity, passing through zero velocity and ending at a negative velocity. Now what information can we get from this graph? Take a look at the units on this graph. If we were to calculate the slope, 
would that result in some meaningful quantity to it? Slope is rise over run. So if we take the magnitude of the velocity along the y-axis, which is measured in meters per second, over the magnitude of the time along the x-axis, which is measured in seconds, we see that the slope will result in giving us the units of meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. Since that is the unit of acceleration, it's clear that the slope of a VT graph gives us acceleration. Also, because the area under a VT graph gives us the displacement, this apple goes up and back down to the same height at which it started, the areas under each section of this VT graph should be equal. So a velocity time graph tells us quite a bit of information about the motion of an object. So how can motion be depicted on an acceleration time graph? An AT graph is set up the same way as a VT graph. If we think about the apple being tossed in the air, we know that the slope of the line showed a constant negative acceleration, so we simply draw a horizontal constant acceleration in the negative direction on our AT graph. This leaves us with our final type of representation of motion, mathematical representations. Now to learn about those, you'll see the videos titled Horizontal Motion, Vertical Motion, and Projectile Motion.